Okay. Um, my name is Rene Meissner. Ich bin my name is Rene Meissner and I am since um, yeah, I'm working as a web analyst. I'm helping out uh, from networks, companies like VW and uh, McDonald's, what data should be, uh, should be taken and what can you answer with it. Here's someone who always tries to, to walk along the line of what useful data is and what unuseful data is. And my word on the companies is usually you need some customers who don't get the idea of uh, just taking the data they need and not too many. About two months ago, Spreblik uh, had an initiative about the openness and what kind of data Spreblik uses by using plugins or widgets from Twitter, Facebook and so on. And Johnny Häusler is, was really surprised about so many users commented on the thing it, whether um, they should save themselves by scripts or something. And he was a little pissed off about uh, earning money with it and he uh, committed to uh, not to like all this data collection thing and he decided not to raise so much data and uh, he um, uh, he switched the buttons to an opt-in where you have to, uh, where you don't have the situation that's collecting the data at once. And the question is what, uh, what use do the data have? And you have a number, 0.3% of the German uh, GDP um, are, uh, are taken by surfing. And this, uh, this splits into three groups, the classic, uh, classic advertisement, and uh, they have about 35%, and there are 2 billion uh, search engines in a kind of gray area with uh, 300 million affiliate networks and so on. So this basically means when you have the VW uh, data, you have uh, a value of about two cents per, uh, per click uh, that the publisher earns by, uh, by having a page viewed and to have uh, advertisements on it and that people click on it. And the builds, for example, uh, have about 10% of the income, so it's about 40 million during the year. Axel Springer uses uh, Zanox, one of the biggest uh, German affiliate networks, and uh, Spiegel Online has about 140 million visits, so it's single visits one of the biggest uh, things on the place. Every user uh, yeah, serves for about 40 cents per day. He uh, uses about two hours for this, according to ZDF. So he has some a price of 18 cents per hour. Especially uh, in special interests like Fogo Verlag, um, that works a lot with the machine, machine uh, constructing. Um, one single user profile uh, makes about 15 euros. So in that case, uh, as soon as a user has uh, has the access to special data. The, um, the, the white paper offerer uh, has the complete data, including the email address and everything, and pays about 15 euros for that to the uh, yeah, company house.
Finally, the, the question is, what kind of data is it that's valuable? And first of all, let's step away from the technical aspect for a moment. And let's have a look at from the perspective of the uh, advertisement customers. What does it mean that data is valuable? Basically, the more revenue a single product generates, the more value the user data has. So an advertisement for a candy bar, for example, is, is a pretty simple form of advertisement. The uh, customer is supposed to uh, remember the name of the product. And on the other hand, an advertisement for a car or for other high-valued goods. So you basically can say, wherever uh, there are sales guys involved, you can usually say that the customer data has a high value. So whenever it, uh, it pays to, uh, to hire a salesman, uh, the data has a high value. So the speaker is complaining that uh, he's seeing only half the comments on his uh, on his laptop there. But basically, the higher the value of a single product is, the higher the value of the uh, data that is transferred from one firm to another is. And it doesn't matter if it's uh, if the data is transferred legally or not, because that is not of primary interest right now. So the next question is, uh, what kind of product is it? Is it? Uh, is it a single purchase, or is it uh, some sort of uh, some sort of contract that has a, uh, a, that goes on for a certain amount of time? So, for example, uh, for a, for a cell phone or something like that, then uh, there's uh, higher interest, and there are profiles of the of the customers involved. Means uh, companies are interested. Is is this a customer that uh, that uh, matches our our co company philosophy and is of value to us? So the the more interaction there is with the user, the more value uh, has the the, the the data of the value has. So whenever we can get the user to uh, to order a newsletter or uh, submit his email address for a newsletter. And, uh, and do more than just watch an advertisement, for example, play a game, then it's, uh, the, the data of that user will get more value. Because I, I have the proof that the user is, is actually active, and uh, I can tell my I can tell the, the boss of marketing we have uh, a certain number of users who spend a certain amount of time on our on our website, for example. And they have the users have interacted with your brand name a certain number of times, and because the user interacts, the profiles get better and better. So it uh, it becomes very clear which uh, which things the user prefers and. Uh, uh, the uh, the social connections of a, of a given user. And there are a certain uh, certain keywords that we have to differentiate. There are three uh, things that are used in contact, conversion, and the generation of leads, which means that I know the user and all his contact data. But the more value the data of a user has, uh, the more I, I, uh, I operate in a gray area. Basically, in, in a database, uh, and that's, this is valid for, for all uh, big customer relationship management tools, uh, in the end, I will have a very clear profile of a single user. And even if I uh, scramble, for example, IP addresses, I will be able to uh, to get value out of this data using external tools. And uh, we're operating in a gray area here because, for example, um, everybody knows things like uh, redirections. A user clicks on a, on a certain link and he is redirected. 
click that drop and then the browser erstmal and, and the browser uh, takes a few seconds um, and goes from uh, from one page to the next uh, loads a handful of URLs and while this is happening in the majority of cases I already have uh, a handful of cookies from from different uh, advertisement companies des Shops Zalando sonst irgendwas darüber streiten wer jetzt eigentlich um, dazu geführt hat, dass am Ende was gekauft wurde. And uh, those companies will um, basically argue uh, with each other uh, what led to the customer making a purchase, uh, for example. Nach meinem eigenen Empfinden und vor allen Dingen nach meiner Kenntnis um, glaube, dass uh, sich alle Anbieter, die sich in den Markt tummeln, and uh, according to my experience, pretty much all the uh, all the companies who operate in that area. Uh, operate not within the limits of, of German law, but more about that in a minute. So the question is, how does the user actually pay for his or with his own data? I don't have to go into too much technical detail here, I suppose, but uh, about talking about individual cookies and the like. The, the history is, the story is pretty clear. There are the web bugs and there are cookies, flash cookies, and so on. And uh, in fact, the, the thing is that especially when a separate department for data mining or a data warehouse exists in the company, um, sooner or later, as a web analyst, you will be asked whether uh, they can work with, whether you can work with shared objects, whether you're capable of doing that. Personally, I would always reject such a request, but in principle, in principle, I would only use cookies, and in, in most cases, it's all about, it's all about page impressions anyway, and for that, Cookies, of course, are completely useless as well. The basic problem yesterday was that um, the, publisher, the publishers are getting paid by views, and what they're interested in, logically, is that as many users as possible are there, as many users as possible clear their cookies, because that will generate more unique visitors. And that actually is the currency that, in most cases, is getting paid, uh, whether that's 10 cents or three cents, it doesn't matter. If as many people as possible per month or per day clear their cookies, then suddenly you have more unique visitors, more than perhaps Germany has. And uh, if you look at Volkswagen figures, for example, uh, you would think that everyone in this room was reading the Bild Zeitung, Germany's largest paper, but a tabloid, and that surely is not the case. Now, today, times are a bit different. Uh, the issue of clearing cookies uh, is actually an obstacle these days, because the um, suppliers these days earn money by targeting. Uh, targeting ads is the cash cow for companies such as, well, the main companies and uh, the publishers still care about having as many unique visitors as possible, but in the future and today, the targeters will only look at, towards finding out as exactly as possible who these visitors are, because that's how it works. And what's also involved in this topic is fingerprinting. Personally, I have not noticed fingerprints being used. Uh, think that is fingerprinting in the browser via the list of installed fonts and plugins and so on, finding out whether the same user is revisiting question and interruption from the audience. Banks use this. And in such circumstances, for security reasons, that actually does make sense. I would just like to, like to briefly introduce uh, the technologies that we have and will deal with in the future. Uh, there is the cookie selection. Um, 
zu verhindern oder, um, this oder, is about oder aufzufangen letztendlich. Uh, heißt, dealing with the issue of cookies getting cleared. Uh, imagine you're visiting a page with a browser which you haven't visited before, but you have a tag there from uh, some supplier that recognizes a cookie. And this ID and profile data is then exchanged between the two web uh, content suppliers. And if I revisit that page at a later stage and imagine it's a shoe shop and I find some, some ads from that shoe shop, I will get a new idea, but in the background, these will then be synchronized and, uh, and uh, the information is getting exchanged and this then uh, gets you around selectively cleared cookies, profiles, could be registered across different devices and uh, because it is a problem that people are surfing with more than one device. They are at work, they are using their home PC, their laptop, tablet, mobile devices and next month uh, it will be their Apple TV. So um, the question is how can I get these profiles linked and the most important tool for that these days is a newsletter. The newsletter, the fact that many people, that, that all suppliers offer newsletters is not because they have such great content in those. No one reads, reads newsletters, well, not quite, but most people don't really read newsletters, they delete them immediately, but still use mail clients that do a preview and at the time that that preview is generated, the supplier knows the device ID, it knows here is a user with 103 devices who got online and if I can get the user to click on a voucher or an, a giveaway or something, then I actually have the connection to the browser and in principle then I have a cross-device profile that the unique visitor suddenly has become a real, really unique visitor across devices. There's an example, so there's DC Storm that uses uh, this technique and it's really, uh, really happy with it. The next thing is, that's really important right now and that's going to come up soon, is app tracking. Uh, with apps, it's the same with newsletters that uh, the publishers uh, are building apps. And it's also one reason that uh, they can uh, cross-device information and uh, cross-device tracking in one app. For example, in Omniture, there are thousands of uh, of services for app tracking. You have a one UDID and uh, there's one special ID that's not on another device. So you can be sure about it and really, uh, really good. And in most apps, there's an OAuth service or something else, an authenticating service, and you can say that you can uh, can check it with the server um, and you have uh, the connection. And in most apps, you usually have a web view where you can also track and uh, connect things, especially in devices, not in iOS, but Android, but uh, they usually use the same data and the same shared objects. Via URL parameters, you get some with a special scheme, and you have a newsletter. And in case you click here and you have the app, and you can install it, then there are special parameters in there, and you can uh, you can get a to and fro channel. Uh, you can get it from the web and to the app store and via the app store and the app back to the device and the web. The next thing is the network operator and it might sound a little weird. I was a little surprised about to see 
This mobile enabling business is so strong right now. I was always a little surprised about, you know, have built the E or some other pages and they had the idea to say, we want a web stick or a special network offer. From my point of view, there's no sense for them to make that because that's not their cause, core thing. They, don't, they are not really a network operator until you think about the thing that there are additional data that you could use for advertisements, for example. You can in build mobile, for example, they use Vodafone and that's the basic operator, and you can have a connection between the telecom contract, uh, which is the only serious system to, to have payments. You can put the connections to the, to the offering. And there's no question how you can pay that, and you, you can just connect that. Uh, important companies are NetBiscuits. They usually made proxies. For example, at Build.de, and uh, they have mobile offerings. And when you just look at what they are actually transmitting and what's on the NetBiscuit server, you can see that they also use uh, the phone numbers, for example. And that's an extract from the log. You have the complete number, which means that a customer, uh, that Bild.de has the phone number, which has it anyway because you have Build Mobile. Build Mobile uh, uses the data that safely that they uh, sell it to, to third party companies. If you search for something like Build Mobile, which is actually a successor of, of Yamba.de. Yeah, you can, with this contract, if you open this page with a Bob Moma contract, for example, then there's not the, the field where you have to put in your, your mobile number or something to download something, but there's only the option to click to download, and in that moment they, uh, they've set up a contract with Bob Mobile. Which happens a lot, actually. So, for example, if we have a look at Facebook.com, it's not possible to go to that side from a mobile network. So, why is that? It's a normal mobile page. The only thing it, it skips is displaying the pictures, and otherwise than that, it's just a simple client. You can only access it if, if Facebook has made an arrangement with your mobile operator, and uh, which means that your telephone number is, is transmitted. And now we can understand why it's only possible to access that site when you have a contract with uh, operators like E Plus or, or Blaude. And those are the technologies that are used uh, today in order to, to gather data. So cookies are very important, these shared objects will become very important in the future because it allows you to cross-reference devices. And it's also a very important part of this uh, picture is uh, the apps and, and newsletters. So my experience is that uh, most of the data that is gathered is not really necessary. And the uh, bosses of the marketing departments they say uh, it's better to get as much data as possible from a user because they don't know what questions may arise in the future and uh, they hope they will be able to answer all upcoming questions with the data that they already have. And this fact leads to the situation where data is, is actually much too cheap today because it's too easy to, to collect it. 
So, for example, in, in the US, the advertisement uh, companies uh, are, uh, are not happy that in the uh, Safari browser, uh, by default, third party cookies are blocked. Which means that a lot of tools from these companies uh, are not fully functional and this uh, severely limits the possibilities of the advertisement companies and they put a lot of pressure on, on Apple. And uh, as a matter of fact, I'm not really sure why Apple is doing that, but it uh, looks like they are on the side of the customer in, in this case. So gathering data is, is a really easy thing to do. And when you look at what a user can do to prevent the collection of data, then it uh, turns out that we have a, a lot of tools that don't really make sense. In, uh, back in 1999, there was a thing called P3P. It came from IBM. It was some sort of XML tag that you could use to describe uh, what data was being collected and if it was transferred to third parties and why. And uh, browsers like the Internet Explorer used that and used it to inform the user which data was collected. And it displayed a little icon in the, uh, in the corner of the browser window and was informing the user, but uh, the user was just told that data was being collected, but he did not have the option to, uh, to opt out there. And uh, at about the same time, there was another, another initiative. And they used, uh, <laughs> they used uh, a nice procedure where you had to accept one cookie first in order to not get any, any more cookies later, which is uh, pretty senseless for, for an opt-out mechanism. So they, they speculate that the users are uh, lazy and dumb and forget about things rather quickly. And the moment I delete my cookies, I've also deleted them and the, everything starts again. So similar to that is uh, it is with NoTrack from Mozilla where do not track is uh, very uh, deeply hidden within uh, the the settings it's a bit, little better in the Firefox, Firefox versions and uh, it sends uh, HTTP header DNT and if it's set to one uh, vendors are asked to turn off tracking, advertising, retargeting, etc., um, turn off the, the saving of that data. The largest uh, tracking company at the moment is Google Analytics with uh, about 50% market share in all sites uh, or at least uh, all page impressions. Google Analytics is part of that initiative. And, uh, it doesn't. Um, the, all these procedures don't work uh, because Google doesn't support Do Not Track, and Adobe is also not really taking part in this. Opt-out procedures are um, sort of mechanisms that uh, give companies a justification that users have their power and uh, are and should give, give them some sort of feeling of security, but in, uh, in, in the fact that the, the only sensible uh, procedure is an opt-in procedure. So if you have a look at a company if, like Nugad, if you don't know it, it's a company from Berlin. It's been bought by the German Postal Service. And uh, in generally speaking, Nugad is represented on very many sites and generates a perpetual profile of user behavior. And Nugad has already uh, got a certificate by the, by the personal person responsible for the data protection in Germany um, that uh, they are handling your data so, uh, responsibly. So it doesn't say, it says, basically it says what I have been viewed at some point in time. And if I go to build.de, for example, and they have, they use Nagat and Google Analytics or WebTrack and so on. 
um, which is quite funny because Google Analytics uh, is uh, there too, uh, with, uh, and also, uh, which is funny because Google Analytics is by Google and WebTrack is by Axel Springer, who uh, who uh, runs build um, anyway they are so they seem to be interested in more data so nugget has a look at the contents of the site for example when uh, when the user visits it and makes a schema and uh, analyzes that data and uh, creates creates reports for depending on some sorts of criteria and these preferred information are sent to Nugad and are uh, added to my profile. If I don't delete my cookie with and do anything else or do anything else with my browser and possibly have the build de app on my iPhone, then uh, where where the same advertisement is in there, it is linked to all the other profiles and maybe other companies that are customers of Nugget. Uh, other companies are Winloop, Telecom, maybe, uh, etc. So, in this moment, that when I look at the website, Build DE, for example, so Build receives about 70 cents for a thousand praise impressions, uh, but Nugget had, has received a more important. Uh, knowledge. So uh, the, the longer Nugget and other targeters can watch me and super, uh, survey me, um, they are generating a profile that is much more worth. And Wunderloop, for example, uh, for example, said after three clicks they sort of know which click I'm going to do next. So they are. Um, the, so they basically can say, I know the user, and uh, they can say what this person is going to do. So Nugget is paying for that to build, or their customers are paying to that, and the data that uh, have been received by Nugget are getting better and better and more qualified and lead to the, the, the leads to the more precision within Nugget. I also want to look at the topic targeting and retargeting, both of it should be relatively clear. Looking at the profile of the user, I can make educated guesses what the user is interested in. If I'm on sports pages, there's a high likelihood that Sky commercials will be delivered. And the probability of the click is predictable with the targeting of 3% is the standard retargeting. If I look at a shoe store, I will be provided with shoe commercials for the next 14 days. Retargeting causes so there are cases where people uh, are looking for are looking at shoes for 14 days after the first time you look at shoe store so that's when retargeting doesn't really work out so there's another point and that's the uh, so-called behavioral targeting so that means the content on many pages is explicitly modified based on the user's profile. So, and this is one of the largest, um, largest profits to be expected in the future. So normally when I go to um, a normal site, some, some uh, TV program listing or something, so normally I have like about 50 links there. So the links that are there, they, they fight for attention with my with my trigger finger that wants to close the window and one of those 50 links I'm most likely to, to click on. So when I, make, when I do retargeting based on the user profile I can modify the content in a way so that the user that there will be click rates of about 30 percent 
onto the Google AdSense, uh, in comparison to Google AdSense. So there will be fewer links, more links, even though they, they look different, lead to the same offers. And if you have the, the Google sales people from Hamburg uh, over to visit, they're all uh, swooning about click rates of about 30% upwards. And then when you know that a common insurance, uh, clicks on insurance ads are about three euros per click, you can imagine how you can imagine how much the publishers are trying to get this retargeting on their sites. So from the perspective of the user, this is a complete ca catastrophe because they don't actually see any any proper content anymore. They only see the results of some retargeting algorithms. So in principle, that was it. That's the end of my talk. And I'd be available for questions now. My contact data is on the slides. So if there are any questions, please ask them now. First question. Why did you mention Google? so relatively little. The answer is because Google in Germany is, of course, um, the market leader, looking at the, the two billion that are invested in search engine marketing each year, then it's obvious that most of this uh, two billion go to Google. And specific, specific topics like uh, keyword search, so, which means that the, the AdWords ads are automatically generated from the search string from the user. Or in case you get something like um, comparable or related search, related profiles, related sites. So when I search for something, I click on a result. And at that moment, Google, Google is looking at other users' data that clicked on similar things with a similar profile and then repositions the, the paid links, the sponsored links, in a way that makes it more likely for me to click. So I myself, I'm rather uh, torn on the topic of search engine marketing because there's many topics where it, there's many areas where it really works and where it's also useful from the perspective of the user. For example, seminars. These are, these are things that you just don't want to gather from uh, long organic search results. So this is where search engine marketing is useful. Another question from the internet. Multiple users want to know how they can um, how they can ac act privately on the internet and how they can protect themselves from this data. I myself am uh, not very careful about deleting my cookies because I reject third-party cookies in general and because, of course, I have to actually do research for the, for the talks and stuff. But I actually um, I think one of the better tools is something like a fire cookie, so I can always see what is being tracked, and so I have an option to actually turn it off. Another question from the audience, how exactly are these click prices uh, calculated? So how do customers know how effective their advertising is? How do they calculate, how do they figure out whether a click is really worth it? Because they're talking about serious sums here in the end. So in the end, it's a plain market mechanism. So, for example, when I say you should you should actually have uh, opt-in instead of opt-out, that would absolutely um, lead to less targeting. But since we have a specific amount of uh, advertising area, it is very clear that, especially considering banners, etc., 
geguckt, ob der User das gesehen hat. They don't actually track whether the user has, has looked at the banner. So they, they only check whether the banner has been served to the browser. And sometimes the browser is being asked, did you actually show this? And if it's outside of the viewable area over the, uh, below the fold, then nobody really cares. So the publishers um, will not uh, have it an interest to tell the, the advertiser that this banner wasn't really visible to the user. So they give out um, very exaggerated data effectively to the, to the customers, which is also what leads to them rather low price at the moment. So when, when Bild.de with 100 million visits per month and it's 40, 40 million euros per year or maybe 50 million per year in advertising revenue, then that means that that's relatively little, especially considering how big the, the online advertising sections are. So at the moment, there's just way too many publishers on the market to actually get reasonable pricing. So because the prices are so low, there's an inflation of advertisement, and that's why the pages on the majority of cases just look very ugly and overloaded and have long loading times, etc. In what sense are there possibilities to build profiles apart from those kind of cookies? Um, for example, from the browser identification, from geolocation, from uh, IP addresses, etc. So, uh, um, so uh, in which sense even uh, will people even be tracked where they have set everything to off? So yeah, the, the companies will go down, have a problem then, but um, no one will care. So it's basically like Nielsen ratings for TV uh, viewers. Everybody knows that these numbers are fabricated, but um, um, but but still, they, they they all rely on them. So, for example, someone noticed that three teachers have to be part of a panel and not run with North West failure because um, <coughs> during holidays the viewing numbers of a certain TV center went down. So, um, so these things are benchmarks, and we people are uh, and and there there are you know the benchmark between certain publishers which is a difference to tools that calculate for themselves and also that are also integrated with uh, tools by the actual customers so if a calf manufacturer um, posts uh, an advertisement on Spiegel.de, for example, you can also uh, imagine, uh, you, you will also, there will also be probably a tracking code by the car manufacturer, manufacturer themselves. So, so, so for example, um, I was astonished that a certain advertisement company asked me for our own tracking code, and I was astonished that that, that they actually wanted that and uh, added that too. Would it make sense to make? To, to make inquiries, for example, with scoring, a, what's happening with scoring agencies, would it be, make sense to make inquiries with these, with these companies as a customer? Um, answer is, I, I think it would make sense, but I haven't tried that myself or thought about that ourselves. It probably would be very interesting to ask Nugget, for example, um, I think they even offer that, and Google offers that uh, with the privacy dashboard, and I think that would be a basic uh, demand from those companies that it, that you are able to do this. But uh, in general, this is an opt-out thing, so I think it's not the best idea to demand this instead of an opt-in. May, would I assume that IP addresses don't, don't really don't really play a role, um, and and it's more or less going via cookies all the time? Yes, answer that is the case. IP addresses are used for geolocation, but and for for localization, but rather not for the traffic. 
So I have been for 15 years, of, I have heard for 15 years that MP addresses have to be anonymized. I have uh, for 15 years now and I have not seen one log file that works this way. Uh, the standard Apache log file saves the IP addresses and it works this way. And I see so many people here that uh, were, are responsible with a, high resp with a high probability responsible for so many web servers and I would like to ask them to go into the Apache, their own Apache config and at least delete the, log for, uh, the, the IP addresses from log files or deactivate the log files themselves. And, um, so, yeah, so uh, the, the standard argument for log files is that uh, that they say that, that they make attacks more visible. That's not true, because as soon as the server load is high enough, you can't look at the log files anyway, so it doesn't make really sense. Uh, questions? Um, do you know a case of a citizen that... Do you know a case where this, uh, sorry, the, the question is hard to understand. So we, uh, what situation would there have to be in the future that people shouldn't have be afraid of targeting and retargeting and so on? My answer is fairly simple. It would be opt-in, and I'm pretty sure that the, as soon as the European Union has enacted a directive, that I would have to ask the users whether they, I am allowed to save their statistics and data. I am convinced that this has to come and it shouldn't be a problem at all for Nugget and other companies like that um, because they can make uh, loads and loads of programs that give allow you uh, that, that make it easy for users to make the, do this opt-in can play games and so on and I think this opt-in should come and it must come and it's only the chance for that to work so another short question about the GFK panel. There's a nice uh, movie about this, where um, where people manipulate the GFK feedback boxes and manipulate the entire German TV program. So my question would be if there whether there is a tool that does cookie sharing, so we can all claim to be I am. I claim to be the same person and so I, I start my web browser and I get the cookie from somebody, get, get a profile from somebody else, surf with it and then close my browser, upload the profile and somebody else can then download the profile and keep on using it. And this way we can completely mess up their data. The answer is uh, I don't know of any such tool but it should be rather easy to build to applause and laughter from the audience. So there, there used to be a scrambler or something for, for Firefox that just um, generated pseudo IDs, which of course uh, confuses the servers and they find IPs, uh, IDs they don't know, they never actually uh, generated, which is kind of funny, but I think it's a good idea to build a some sort of service, some sort of peer-to-peer -peer system where you can actually exchange cookies, profiles, and you could get, go, go and pick, pick your cookies, like do you have any cookies for a post-privacy profile or for female interests, and that would be fun. A question from the internet. There's a question if you can just uh, turn off cookies in your browser and JavaScript too and see what happens then. Nochmal die Frage, jetzt habe ich vergessen. 
Okay, could you, could you repeat the question, please? Uh, question from the chat. If you just turn off cookies in JavaScript in your browser, is that a way out of the dilemma? And the answer is, in principle, yes, but the problem is that that makes surfing really unflexible. So in the end, it's really, it's, it's actually possible. And of course, there's lots of uh, people, even in the, in the advertising agencies, that have their own buttons for disable JavaScript, disable cookies. But in effect, you shouldn't, um, you shouldn't fool yourself because John Doe is not going to use these tools. So John Doe is not going to actually do this. And the previous question actually uh, talked about different uh, European Union directives. So the question is, what is the... What is possible in Germany? What does the law allow in Germany? Is that controlled by anyone, checked by anyone? My impression is that with IP addresses, with the former Secretary of Justice, had uh, problems deleting the IP addresses in the log file. We have no method to guarantee the protection of privacy. Nugget has been certified by the Data Protection Registrar. This means that no personal data are in those profiles. With Adobe Omniture, I can have a look at the, road, at the raw data and download them. They will not be deleted, and I will be a customer for 10 years, and for those 10 years, I can still access the raw data, and I can create everything from that data, and if I still buy data, from other sources and integrate them, I can find out who that actually was. And that's the problem. We have no tool. And even if we have a data protection registrar who looks at Facebook, for example, and asks for the like button to, take down, to be taken down, because we don't know what it does. Even without a data protection registrar, we don't uh, know what uh, happens with those data. Effectively, the website operator is responsible for dealing with those data responsibly. That was interesting. I have another question, meta question. Your business is consulting to generate statistics. What's your motivation for this talk? You said the customers don't do good things with the data. My motivation is, in 1996, I wrote an article in the CT about cookies. One week later, I moved to Berlin, started working at Pixel Park, doing a project for Konrad Electronik. And for the session handling, we could use the cookies. No. <laughs> So, my motivation is clear. I ask that the users be asked when the data is stored and when it's processed to actually um, produce value from them. So, because my data is worth something and I tell all my customers that, in principle, they should always try to not gather any unnecessary data and excess data. And it usually works, and that's quite astonishing, because normally the, the, customer, the client says, can you track this and that? And then there's a project manager and a technician and an account manager, and they're all staring at the, at the IT guy, and he's like, mm -hmm, yes, you can. And then the, the customer walks out, and you, you sit together, and the techie says, well, 
we could, but maybe we shouldn't do that. Maybe you shouldn't track that. And then the project manager says, but, but why not? I mean, the customer wants it. So the customer only asked, can you do this? The technician says, yes, we can. And then when I talk to my customers, like for example, McDonald's, I say I want to have opt-in. So then McDonald's normally responds, are you crazy? And then we actually ask the customer, and normally you meet you meet somewhere in the middle, and um, you compromise on opt-out or opt-in, because uh, opt-out because it's too complicated. But actually, most of the customers are open for the suggestion of opt-in. So now I'm currently talking about normal customers. I'm not talking about uh, companies like Nugget or Comparables that actually make their money with getting, gathering data. So. There, the they, they don't actually have any interest in, in preventing uh, data uh, gathering because that's against their, their prime business interest. Question: Tools, uh, tools such as Adblock Plus or NoScript. Um, so there's currently no actual hard data on how many people use Adblock Plus or NoScript and how many people are thus lost for the tracking industry. So currently the only method you'd have to actually find out about it is two different two, different, two methods. The first is uh, a survey, which doesn't usually work, and the second is trying to get a, a browser fingerprint and then see if this user has been there before, track them with your browser fingerprint. But that only makes sense when there are sites that have like 5 million users and um, it doesn't make sense to uh, put a fingerprinting system on the site otherwise. And it also heavily depends on which sites I actually go to. So if maybe 30% of people come to my website from Facebook and they go back to Facebook and they spend the time on Facebook, then I know that about 100% of those people don't actually delete cookies because they are so nervous that they actually log into Facebook 20 times a day and spend their time there. And the 10th the time a day you have to log in, they probably tell themselves, okay, whatever, maybe I'll just not delete the cookies because it's just too much of a hassle to keep re-logging in all the time. So there's currently no data about this. I have two questions. Uh, so the first one is that there was uh, the info that Apple was planning to, mm, uh, to, to integrate this tracking data into apps and sell uh, all the data they have about uh, the iPhone's user data uh, and sell that to companies. Uh, and second one, is there any information about um, the is, is, is the contact data and telephone data in a smartphone used in some sort of um, form for a, for an advertising company? Uh, the answer is I don't think so because the in information is not rather not interesting for an advertising company. Um, the, when I want to generate leads, um, <coughs> I have want other information, and I don't think that so from, from, from time, if at some time there was the rumors that this would happen, but as people are so sensible, um, I doubt that this is happening. Um, I already mentioned Adobe, the Adobe system where you can track online and offline, and in principle this would be possible to me, for example, to, trans to read the address book and transmit it to um, either via hacks or directly via the app, but uh, I doubt this is used at the moment. And and Adobe or Armature don't use this, your web tracking tool, um, they don't prohibit this, they just uh, don't uh, stop doing it. So a question is, if it's so difficult to turn this off, um, then it would it might be the better idea to give back the, the earnings for all the, to, to all the users. Um, how about that? Yeah, indirectly, they're already getting some sort of benefit because 
the marketing itself is going is part of the product cost and therefore when the product cost gets lower um, the, the Customers buy this, uh, who buys this, uh, pay for this, and the online as offline users pay the same price. So, um, the the internet platforms are winning uh, on that sense. We have to say, and uh, what happens, for example, with Google TV and other TV systems, um, to see. Uh, what's going to happen there, but effectively the company value of Nugget is a database and uh, that's the large problem. There's a huge treasure and uh, also within Facebook and, and Google and no one will forget these data and these data will be evaluated eventually uh, and when the, when the market share of, uh, or, the, the, or the, the, the company price of Google goes down, the uh, shareholders will ask Google to evaluate this data. For example, insurance companies will be interested in this kind of data and they will ask Google at some point. There's also another com question from the internet. The chat um, has several questions. What qu companies are famous, uh, for example, to buy Facebook data and if wouldn't it be use a good idea to create a, a, a licensing company, a licensing organization for your personal data. So, um, I haven't, I haven't read this yet that companies, uh, insurance companies, for example, have access to your Facebook data, but I am pretty sure that this will come. Uh, and a licensing uh, organization for your personal data might be an interesting uh, idea, but I'm, I personally think we just pre should prevent data from being collected. I have a question. Um, I'm a web publisher myself. <laughs> And, uh, I don't collect this data, but uh, I have ex uh, experimented with affiliate links, and I have noticed that very data, are, very many data are um, are lost, and very many, and only about. 10% of all the of the advertisers are, are actually serious, and uh, with Google AdSense, it, there's much larger con con conversion rate. And I wonder why, what, what the reason? What's the reason for that? And uh, I think that Google might internally do this retargeting. Um, do you know anything about that? Um, in principle, I think this all the affiliate. The uh, area is very grey uh, and dark grey, um, and if you look at these affiliate companies and who is in the, on the board of directors and, 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 these, and, the, and affiliate with these company, companies, and then you look at these private home pages, then you will see that they often they are often are like up to 500 uh, affiliate links on that. So I think most of them are just spammers, and I wouldn't know why an automatically generated site and that just steals content and just has affiliate links. Why this could be trustworthy for users, and why should why this should leave some sort of value added value to the customers, and Google for blocks and filters and so on much more. And also, Google is much more interested in the revenue that happens there, and the targeting engine uh, for, engine by Google is just simply great, and uh, apart from that, um, from some sort of scrap things that, um, for example, with an, where, where, where there was a school shooting, um, there were suddenly very uh, inappropriate uh, adverts, and because they make so much sense, many, many people click there, and uh, it seems to that, that, that Google, people lay very much of their trust in them, in, in Google, and and uh, I think Google earns uh, in our, uh, at least as much with double click as they yeah. earn with uh, AdSense. Uh, so, um, yeah. so, first I'd like to say um, I, I find this discussion really interesting, but we're already five minutes over time.
Aber um das jetzt nicht allzu weit äh, so, in order to not zu treiben, drag this out anymore, I'm going to have to ask for the last three questions now. Please. Um, ja, da Sie, um, die Sachen mit den Fallenden so question, because you mentioned the because you, you made a point about the falling share, shares values um, leading to Google actually selling the data. Do you think that we are already at the point where we lost or can we still be saved? And the answer is if we had this uh, cookie peer to peer thing, we would still have a good chance to poison the, the different profiles. And in principle, it's in the US and in Europe. Uh, the politicians are just now waking up. That, that's why we have the European Union Directive, and that's why we will probably have that as law in Germany in the near future, no matter how, many, how much um, certain lobbies are acting against it. So politicians have their very own interest, a very strong interest in not having all this data collecting uh, collected in some uh, huge databases because they might actually want to be chancellor someday and they can't have it uh, can't have facebook know all these things about themselves one day I question a question about net fair does it make sense blocking to block that and uh, what about the privacy enhancements? Are they useful? Uh, the blocking is, uh, is a good idea in principle. Uh, at the moment, most of the networks will, stand, will then still work. Um, dynamic applications still work because they know they would exclude too many people if they didn't. Uh, there are extensions in Firefox to block referrers. Uh, uh, if you click through the, if you right click to open a new tab, uh, there is no referrer. And ad block, uh, of course, does make sense too. So, to to protect your privacy. So, um, I don't use that personally. All I have is a flash blocker uh, because that would bring my computer down. Otherwise, with 20 open tabs. Um, Okay, last question for this evening, please. If, if I look at the whole discussion, uh, I think that advertising is uh, basically a problem. It gets on your nerves, for one thing, and then all that data collection that's connected to it, uh, all, the, all data collection is basically for advertising, and uh, in principle, website operators want the data to earn money, so we're using the um, advertising uh, to generate money, and, 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 that, and, and that pays for, for products. Uh, imagine if we had a micropayment system that worked. Could we, with that micropayment system, make uh, advertising obsolete? Well, advertising in principle base is based on uh, things that have a market value, um, and the higher that market value is, the more product you can sell, and the more profit you make in the end, which is easily seen in, in Apple with 30% margin. Um, uh, no one else in the producing industry uh, is able to do that. I think that micropayment is more sensible for publishers. If you look at the newsletters, says, if you look at podcasts and, and, and blogs and, and and, and, and the ways they make their, their 50 cents or something, and uh, the way that drives that quality, then that, it seems, is the way forward, um, uh, more than uh, the way forward for someone to, to run the site without advertising. Um, well, these buttons to actually reduce the available space for advertising, which drives, us, drives up the price for advertising. So I'm reducing the space. So that, I think, is the future for my.